Hey, what's up YouTube fam? What's going on? Just gonna... In fact, Cocky's gonna do that again. It's gonna be a worthless video, but... Um, yeah, so as we speak, it's Wednesday the 26th of February. We've got Cruise to the Pines on Saturday the 29th. That's three days, um, but I'm working full time, so long hours and more a bit... Got a few things to do, so yeah, I'm a bit pissed today because... I ordered some special hats for the event and three months later they haven't done them so that's stuffed that idea um, but these things happen and yeah these things happen we'll move on but um, so yeah I took this out the other day because I haven't driven it since Motorex at Motorex I hit us um, just turning into one of the off the roads in near Brooklyn I smashed into a speed dump or something like that and smashed my exhaust off and I haven't fixed it yet until now, three days before, so um, yeah, there's been no exhaust places open um, after work, so I've pinched the exhaust from that thing and I'm going to put it on this. Now the issue also is is um, the exhaust goes over the rear axle and when I load this up with stock, it just like crushes it between the axle and the body, so I'm just going to run a side pipe. Um, not to be like a dick or anything, but just because it seems easier with this uh, little bit of time. So it's got extractors to like here and I'll just point it that way and that'll be sick. And then yeah, this vlog's just gonna be like prep until then. So um, I want to chrome this. I'll show you if that can be done. Powder coat this chrome. And one more thing I want to do before the event is um, got this homemade roof rack that I did ages ago. I want to end up Manting my low rider bike onto then so um, we'll get to it do some welding and stay tuned As you can see, this is where it broke off the back. And it's real tiny in there anyway, so it's not breathing very well. That's where it's been hitting one part of the, um, part of the floor. Yeah, part of the floor. That's where it's hit the floor. And that hoop was touching the axle. And yeah, there's a hefty right angle just there. That can't be no good. So yeah, we'll get this better one happening. Alrighty, we've, um, so I've cut the old exhaust off and got the new one kind of in place. Just prop it up. It's probably the wrong way to do it, but if you're like in a hush for an exhaust, and yeah, well this is my way of doing it. So I've propped it up with some timbers so that it matches the flange and then drawn a line where I need it to come out. It needs to be 300 mil behind the rear window and um, facing down at 15 degrees or something. I don't know why I'm worrying because these things run on slick, uh, semi slicks and a lot of other stuff that would make it defectable. So, um, yeah, this is just for the weekend. Then we'll sort out some sort of better exhaust. Now that's all intact and it's sitting up there. Just going to run my chalk down that existing flange just to give us exactly the same angle. I'll take a slither, put it back up, take another slither. Just keep doing that till it measures up nice. Then we can weld the flange on and looking like we've got that job done quicker, a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Now I know it's dodgy, but it's only for the weekend. <laughs> right, guys, getting on a bit now, had some dinner and it's fully dark out here. But I've got my light, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, basically before just use the stick welder to tack the flange in place. Now I've got it all out and I'm just gonna TIG up, just with some stainless filler wire, I'm just gonna TIG up that flange so I can get the car to work tomorrow and we'll keep working on other stuff. Oh, well, that's a pretty ghetto job. Probably really should get a better bench than that, but um, yeah, we'll go to tomorrow now. Ladies, gentlemen, and all other classification, um, it is the next day. I ended up getting, getting the exhaust welded out the night, 
last night and um, it's pretty good, it sounds a lot better and it's not rattling, it's not smashing on the rear, di uh, rear axle. So yeah, I'm just all I need to do is smash like a support hanger. It's pretty rigid, but I don't want it to crack any manifold, so I've just cut the cut these off the exhaust that I cut last night. I know it's dodgy, but Ren in Rome make a dodgy exhaust, apparently they say, so we'll do that and then we'll have enough time to hopefully, yeah, we should have enough time to mount the low rider on the top there. It's gonna be high as fuck, but it's gonna look cool. So um, bear with me and we'll get to that. I'm gonna use some stainless steel tube to as the tire like holder, runner holster things. Cut that in half and yeah, make some mechanical tie downs from the front and, and the rear of course, but yeah, front facing. All right, really not proud of that one, but we can always change the brackets later as long as it lasts the weekend, so. Yeah, don't do that. To start my bike rack, I started off with about a metre and a half of 50 millimetre OD stainless steel tubing. And the most simplest way for me to do it was to get the set square and mark top and bottom, and then get a piece of angle line and run that along the length of the tube to mark your line to cut. Also, all, another way to do it is to put it in the block of a, a, a V block of a press and run the scribe along the uh, blade once the blade is down and you'll get a perfect mark. So that's what I've done this time because I've got to be bothered getting a piece of angle and then take your time to cut it. As you can see, I've really rushed mine and it's a little bit wonky, but um, that's fine. Also, you can double up on your material because you're cutting it in half. So that's what I've done. Uh, I've welded it together in the center. And then I've used the same material, divided it by four, and that's to um, straddle the actual roof rack. So in a minute we're gonna drill some holes in that, and that'll clamp that piece of the roof rack, and then the longitudinal piece will weld on to those, and that's pretty much gonna be the end of it. I just drilled M10 holes, I think, so I can put some M8 bolts in from Bunnings, and I bought some wing nuts so that if it does happen to need to be removed, that's easy enough to do. All right, that's the that's the bike rack. So now we've got those brackets on, bolted in. We'll level up this tube thing, and we weld. Those eyelets you see there are from Bunnings and they are the M6 type and they're rated to 40 kilos, I think, when you use the bolts. Um, when you weld, I think that's probably, the ratings are probably gonna go up, but they're a very simple way to create a tie down point. So yeah, just some stainless 316 filler wire, whatever's um, welded them about 200 mil out from the center of where the bike's gonna mount. So that's where the turnbuckles can mount from that point back and onto the forks. Um, yeah, that was a pretty straightforward job. And then now we're just welding all the clamps to the longitudinal rail and cleaning up the edges before we're done. I, um, yeah, my camera dropped off the roof and it, this thing is still working, so uh, I broke my tripod, my little baby one, but 
much to my amazement, this camera is fine. Um, as you can see, as you can see, this is the bike rack. I chose to use turnbuckles because I think they look a bit more ghetto, even though it's a bit more dicking around to get it on. I don't really like heaps of straps and shit. I've got about five, 10 minutes before I've got to intercept the crews on the freeway. So I'll probably close off this vlog here and the next one, we will see you at Cruise of the Pines 2018. Um, yeah, I'm running on no sleep, so really hope that cheers me up. But um, if you've got any questions about the bike rack or anything, just fire away. Want to see more of my videos? Hit subscribe or maybe even like, comment whenever you like, and yeah, I'll show you what it looks like.